In this video, we're going to be describing the spur grommet and the common washer grommet. We want to go in detail what the difference is between these grommets and how to install them. On the left side of your screen is the spur grommet. The spur grommet has teeth that wrap around the outer lip of the male portion of that grommet. They bite in, so they do not rotate. Here on the right side is a common washer. The common washer is just a flat piece, rather thin compared to the spur grommet, and there are no teeth on it to wrap around the lip of the uh, male grommet. So they are used for light applications. Spur grommets are used for heavier applications here on the left side. We'll start with the installation of the spur grommet. This is a spur die set that's necessary for pressing in those grommets. You'll notice there's a number associated with the size of the grommet on each spur die set. Here's a hole cutter. This is a, a hole cutter for punching the hole prior to the installation of the grommet and it too has a number punched right on it. To install any kind of grommet you need to punch a hole through the fabric first. You can use a hole cutter or you can use a razor blade which we'll show later. Using the hammer style mallet we get right through the material with one or two blows. In this illustration we're using four layers of umbrella material. Once your hole is installed, insert the male portion of the grommet to the underside and push it through. The hole will be quite snug when you push the male part through. Install the uh, spur section of the grommet on top, and then take it over, place your anvil on the table, and then place the tool through the hole. The use of the hammer style mallet makes the installation of a spur grommet much, much easier. If you'd like to see that video comparison, just look up the hammer style mallet then watch the video later, hammer style mallet versus a hammer. After giving it a few blows with the hammer style mallet, then just simply check to see that the grommet is seated in appropriately. If not, give it a few more blows, and then inspect it. There it is, installed appropriately. Remember, those teeth are wrapped around the outer lip of that male grommet, making sure that this grommet will not rotate around easily, and it's very nice and secure. That's all there is to installing a spur grommet. Oh, take note, there's also a number on this to associate what size you need to order or what die set you need. We also want to show you how to do this without a hole cutter. Obviously a hole cutter is much easier, but you can use a razor blade. So here we're just using a razor blade and cutting an X right through the material. This is four layers of material, so it's a little bit difficult to do, but you can get it done. Once your X has been cut, just simply take the male portion, put it underneath, and push it through. This is where it may be a little bit difficult, especially when you have thick assemblies. And it also is a good idea to cut off the excess material with a razor blade or scissors. We're not going to do that here. We're actually going to leave it in place, but I just want to show how you would do it. you got to be careful not to cut yourself if you do this. Okay, We're going to leave that material in there and show you what it looks like when you leave the material in, when you press the grommet in place. It's not as nice looking, but it does work. So again, the principle is the same. Place the anvil on the table, the tool through the top, and then give it a few blows with the hammer style mallet, and uh, you'll be done. You will notice that this is not as clean looking because we didn't cut that excess material off, but it does work. In applications where you only have a few grommets to put in, you may not want to purchase the hole cutter. Uh, you can just use a razor blade and this will be the end result. Alright, we're done with the spur grommet die set and hole cutter, so we're going to set those aside. We're now going to show you the common washer uh, assembly. These die sets do not work with a spur die set, nor does a spur die set work with a common die set, so you need to order those separately. The common washer grommet comes with a hole cutter, it's a rather cheap hole cutter, and a wood block to uh, cut out the material with, but uh, in lieu of that I'm going to use the rubber cutting block that we sell because it's just a much better cutting block. I'm also going to use the hammer style mallet. Again, it only takes a few blows and you have a hole punched right through these four layers of umbrella fabric. We'll take the washer grommet, uh, the male portion, place it on the bottom side just as we'd done earlier for the spur grommet. Then we'll take the washer portion, place it on top. You'll notice the washer portion does not have spurs in it like the spur grommet does. So this grommet is definitely for light applications such as in a flag or in an assembly where there won't be much stress on it. The concave side faces down. Once that's in place, just simply take the anvil again, place it on the table, put the tool through the top, and give it a few blows with a hammer. All 
that's necessary now is to take out the tool and inspect the washer grommet. There it is installed appropriately. If it isn't installed all the way down flat, give it a few more blows with the hammer. Now let's go over this in review again. A spur grommet here has teeth, as you can see here. It's thicker metal and the male portion has a lip that those teeth roll over in. Whereas the common washer has no teeth, a lot thinner metal, and it's for lighter applications. That's a spur grommet. And this one is the common washer grommet. So pick your grommet accordingly. That's it for installing grommets. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call at Sailrite. Thanks again. I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite.